Hi everyone, it's Marcy here. Uh, for those of you who may not know who I am, I'm uh, the Minister of Music at First Baptist Church of Rockport. And uh, as you know, for the past several weeks, we have been doing these live devotions, um, mainly because, sorry, I'm in my favorite chair and I'm just gonna get comfy. Um, it, mainly because, you know, we love you all and uh, we miss you and uh, we know that we need to stay connected to God's word and to be encouraged by one another. And so I hope that that's what you get out of these, that the encouragement that we need, that, that God has put upon our hearts to share with you. Um, so uh, before we get started with today's devotion, I just want to remind you that uh, tomorrow at six o'clock, tomorrow, I don't even know what day it is. It is Tuesday. Uh, tomorrow is Wednesday. And uh, we are going to have our six o'clock Bible study, and uh, we will be doing that from the sanctuary. Uh, Pastor Scott and myself and Becky will be again there playing. So uh, y'all be uh, sure to uh, to tune in and watch and uh, and worship with us and and listen to the word that God has for us. Also, we're going to be on Friday at six o'clock. We're going to be having a good uh, a good Friday service. And uh, we're going to be having Eric and I are going to be leading music and Becky will also be with us and um, we'll be singing some really uh, awesome songs that, that God's laid on our hearts to share. And also uh, we will be participating in uh, the Lord's Supper. So um, we're asking that you uh, that you gather your own elements. And, and I know Jeff put out in an email today that even if you don't have grape juice or if you don't have unleavened bread or, or something like that, you know, God looks at our hearts, and if you can only use regular bread, if you can only use lemonade, if you can only use whatever, you know, water, you know, Jesus turned water into wine. So, uh, the point is, is that we remember. We remember in our hearts what God has done for us. And so, we just ask that you join us at 6 o'clock uh, on Friday for our Good, uh, Good Friday service. And, um, and then of course on Sunday is Easter and, uh, we've got some really exciting things, uh, planned some wonderful songs, just a celebration of Jesus rising again. And, um, this is, this is Holy Week and, uh, you know, I've done a lot of, of, uh, inward reflection, uh, especially being here by myself because my husband is an essential worker, so he is not here right now. So I pretty much spend my days here with um, with my cats, and uh, I do a lot of reading and doing a lot of studying, um, doing a lot of, of reading uh, uh, of my Bible. Obviously, which I, you know, it's not that I didn't before, but when you have more time uh, <laughs> on your hands, you get to read more. So anyways, um, but I've been reflecting and, um, I, you know, I was, I got to thinking, you know, Jesus had a whole week before, uh, all of this happened, uh, when he was, uh, arrested in the garden and, and obviously everything else that happened. And so I was wondering, you know, what happened? What happened during those few days? You know, the, the, after he rode into Jerusalem, he, uh, you know, went and overturned all the, the money changer tables at the, uh, in the temple. And then he went to Bethany that night. And uh, so actually left Jerusalem, went to Bethany and slept and then went back. And, uh, and it was then that he began to teach as much as he could, uh, to the disciples about what was going to be happening and preparing them. Um, the Sadducees, one of the the sects of religious people had asked him about the resurrection and of course he put them in their place about that and obviously the sadducees couldn't do it so the pharisees said we'll get him so starting in matthew chapter 22 it says here in verse 34 it says hearing that jesus had silenced the sadducees the pharisees got together one of them, an expert in the law, and you got to remember this law is talking about the Torah law, the law that was given to Moses to give to the people. And they tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And of course, Jesus replied, to love the Lord your God 
with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All of the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Well, that's all and great. Jesus said, hey, that's it. Well, it, actually in Matthew, it says nothing after that. They didn't ask him any more questions. They, that was it. They couldn't say anything. Yeah, he's right, you know. Uh, and so I got to thinking, well, you know, where did that come from? Well, if you look back in Deuteronomy, when God gave law uh, the law to Moses to give to the people, uh, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, which is, again, one of my favorite chapters in Deuteronomy, uh, it has something that we call the Shema. And it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Now, if the, the person that knew, you know, the expert in the law knew what the greatest commandment was, which came from Deuteronomy chapter 6, of the Lord, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. If he knew that, he also knew what came after it. And guess what? So did Jesus. Jesus taught these things in the synagogue. And so one of the things that I know that um, it obviously wasn't said in, in this particular part of Scripture in Matthew, but it led me into thinking, you know, during this time, a lot of parents are home with their kids. Um, and I see a lot of funny memes. I see, <laughs> you know, parents, they're struggling. And I get it. I'm very glad that Brittany and Bethany were not, uh, we, this didn't happen when they were little. Um, even though I was a teacher, but still, you know, I, I, I get it. Uh, but verse seven of Deuteronomy six says to impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk, uh, walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up, but that impress them upon your children is so important. And I know not all of us like myself, we don't have children at home right now, but our children are very important. What would happen if maybe our parents or those around us, our Sunday school teachers, our uh, whoever it was, did not impress upon us to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength? That is the main greatest commandment, and Jesus knew that. And he knew where it came from because it came from right when God was giving the Israelites his laws. And the most important one is to love God. I know sometimes uh, whenever we are dealing with things that uh, aren't very pleasant, and if you think about it, Jesus was fixing to deal with some things that, that were not very pleasant. Um, and the thing is, is that he knew that. When he was saying all of these things that he taught them, and if you'll go back and read in in right around Matthew uh, 22, 20, uh, chapter 22, chapter 21, <clears throat> all the different things that he taught about. He was preparing the Israelites for what was fixing to happen. He, he was preparing his disciples for what was fixing to happen. And he knew that they needed to remember to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and to impress upon your children to do the same thing because that's how this is carried along throughout the generations. We teach our children. So I'm encouraging you parents today that are at home with your kids, math and reading, writing, all that stuff. That's really important stuff. It helps our brains, helps us to, um, to think, helps us, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I, I pray that you take time to teach your children to love the Lord, their God, 
with all of their heart, not just part of it, but all of it. And that they would love the Lord their God with all of their soul and with all of their strength. Now, the how do we do that? That's really the, uh, the thing. Because we can say, okay, little Johnny, I need for you to love the Lord your God with all your heart. You can tell somebody something. But you know, actions speak a lot louder than words. How are you loving the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your strength? So I just want to ask you this week as we are, are focusing on Holy Week and we are focusing on, on the things that, uh, that happened to Jesus during this week leading up to uh, his death on the cross but also the resurrection. Look at your life. Ask yourself, how am I loving the Lord God with all my soul, with all my strength, with all my mind, with all my heart, with everything that I am? How am I doing that today? And if you're not sure, ask God, because he'll show you. He'll show you little ways how to do that. Because if we're going to impress upon our children to love the Lord your God, they need an example to follow. And what better example than by showing them Jesus, who gave his life for us, so that we could be with him in eternity forever. Because Jesus loves the little children. And he told his disciples whenever uh, there were some children coming up to him that, uh, you know, they were like, oh, get the children away. And he was like, oh, no, bring them on up here. He says he loves the little children. So I want to leave you with a little song. Uh, I hope you're learning something new while you're in quarantine. I've got a ukulele. Uh, I know three chords. So uh, we're going to sing today a song that you all know. And uh, I hope I get the chords right. But if not, just look over it. Jesus loves the little children. Would you sing it with me? Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. God bless you. And I hope that you are having a great week. And I pray that you will, um, will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. I want to pray for us as we, as we go today. Lord, this week we remember what you've done for us. We remember the sufferings that you had to go through. And Lord, I don't understand it. But Father, your will is what needed to be done. And Jesus knew that. And Lord, he also knew that he needed to love you with all his mind and his soul and his heart and his strength. Lord, I thank you for the parents out there who are working with their children right now. Lord, I pray that you would give them strength. I pray, Lord, that you would give them the wisdom that they need to uh, to teach their children the things that they need to know, Lord, not just about school-wise things, but, Lord, about you. Father, help our parents, our grandparents, help all of us to impress upon our children to love you with all of their heart and all of their soul and with all of their strength. Show us those ways to do that, Lord. And, Father, I just, uh, just want to pray for those right now who are suffering, with, uh, with illness right now, Lord, whether it's COVID-19, whether it's cancer, whether it's whatever it else it is, Lord, I, I just ask that you would heal them. Father, I pray that you would heal their spirits. I pray that you would heal their bodies. Lord, I thank you again for this time where we get to come together, Lord, even online and worship you and praise you and hear from you. Thank you for loving us. And we lift this prayer up in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Love you guys. And uh, we will see you uh, tomorrow evening for our Wednesday evening service. Bye.